Reports of child pornography are like fairy tales. It's a simple matter of good guys and bad guys. There is no uncertainty about motives or effects. Never any doubt about the so-called evidence. It's a satisfying and even entertaining formula for people who need distractions from the complexity of real life. Simply burn the witches and then we can rest assured that our daily drudgery is not in vain. But if anybody really believes the international crusade against child porn is a noble effort to protect kids from exploitation, you are about to be enlightened by a case that is so outrageous it should shock you against government abuse of power in general and child porn laws in particular. Links and references are in the description below. I'm a 65-year-old American teacher about to go on trial on the charge of producing and possessing child porn. Even though my video for kids, Buddy Massage, has been openly available to the international public for years. My video for kids contains no genital nudity or any other suggestion of sexual motive or effect. In fact, during the initial filming of a five-year-old boy being massaged by a nine-year-old girl, he became so relaxed he fell asleep. The video is only available to people who have read my short ebook, Real Child Safety, on how to protect kids from the most frequent and most deadly dangers in childhood, and then answer a questionnaire to show you read it and don't have any prurient interests. Nonetheless, a local prosecutor in Palermo, Italy, claims that the massage these kids perform is a sexual act, and hence the video qualifies as child pornography according to Italian law. The laws of most modern nations define child porn as images that present minors simulating sexual acts or are otherwise intended to sexually arouse viewers. That's a good definition, except when the concept of sexual acts or sexual motives are stretched to include just about anything, as they often are in the witch hunt atmosphere surrounding child nudity and child sexuality today. Nobody denies that children should be protected from any kind of physical, sexual, or emotional abuse or exploitation, especially when government employees are the ones trying to get away with abusing and exploiting children under the guise of protection. Let me be more specific. In 2013, I was a volunteer in an after-school center in Palermo for children and teens who need scholastic help. I brought my laptop computer to the center once or twice a week and let the kids play English learning games on DVDs. So I was very popular compared to the other volunteers who were unemployed and inexperienced in teaching anything. Having grown up in the archaic Italian school system, the other volunteers merely repeated the same authoritarian methods they themselves suffered through when they were kids. Needless to, stay, needless to say, the success of my more modern interactive approach provoked the jealousy of some of the other volunteers. Since I'm also an amateur photographer, I took some normal pictures of a few of the children during class or outside during recess. Unbeknownst to me, one of the other volunteers, a recent graduate in social work looking for her first job, became suspicious of my interest in photographing children and searched for me online. The other volunteer discovered that I'm very active and I use my real name. I don't try to hide the fact that I've published a few books and a blog promoting accurate, balanced, and comprehensive sex education from the earliest age, and I criticize the mass hysteria over child porn and child sex abuse. A problem is that all of my online activities are in English, a foreign language that the witch hunter doesn't understand. Nonetheless, she reported me to the local police adding the false claim 
that I was taking hundreds of pictures constantly along with her mistranslations of what she saw on the web. The police then examined my websites and blog, interviewed the director of the after school center and kept me under surveillance over the summer. The following fall, the police reported to the prosecutor at that time, there is no evidence of any crime being committed. However, the investigation remained officially open, all without anybody informing me of anything. What exactly is there online about me? I've been a teacher and volunteer with kids for 45 years, and I also read about 20 books a year, mostly about education and child development. So I've accumulated quite a bit of knowledge and experience. I've published many book reviews on Amazon. Over 20 years ago, I wrote a novel, Revolt of the Children, about poor kids in Italy after World War II who rebel against abuse of adults. I wasn't able to find a conventional publisher, so I published the book myself in 2007 at lulu.com. I also wrote a guide for teachers on how to find a job in Italy and a course book for students of English as a foreign language. As an amateur photographer, I've made thousands of images of every conceivable subject, mostly not children, and my Flickr photo stream contains about 500 photographs with about 3 million views so far. I am also an administrator of four photography groups with about 35,000 members in all. In 2011, I published my ebook, Real Child Safety, which also criticizes the mass hysteria over child sexuality. Most people are obsessed with relatively rare and less deadly sex crimes against older children while ignoring the common causes of most deaths and serious injuries in early childhood. Many people are much more worried about the risk of a 12-year-old becoming a victim of indecent exposure than they are about the risk of a three-year-old being crushed to death in a car crash. I don't defend pedophilia or real pornography, but contrary to folk wisdom, there is some evidence that when pornography becomes easily available, there is actually a significant reduction in sex crimes. My more controversial work began when I published a photo documentary about a friend's daughter, Girl Becomes Woman, and I tried to start a Breast Pride Education Foundation. Girl Becomes Woman is a slideshow of 100 images of a girl from age 8 to 15 as well as a hundred pages of text focusing on her mental and physical maturation, describing my experience, observing and interacting with her and her family and friends in daily life. The documentary includes illustrations of the stages of breast development, but contains no genital nudity and hence is legal in every English speaking jurisdiction I know of. My blog is called Sex Hysteria, which promotes sex education as well as criticizing the hysterical popular fixation on sex crimes against minors. To be perfectly clear, I don't defend child sex abuse. I'm not trying to lower the age of consent, and I don't defend real child porn. I do advocate sex education, and I do propose the hypothesis that excessive inhibition in early childhood may be the cause of widespread clitoral erectile dysfunction in adult women. But none of these sexual topics have anything to do with photography. Nonetheless, the unemployed would-be social worker saw my books and blog online and felt a thorough investigation by the police was in order. When the police took no immediate action against me, the would-be social worker said she was flabbergasted. Unaware that there was an open investigation already, in 2014 I began filming my video Buddy Massage. I videoed two kids giving each other a normal massage and a few months later I asked another couple if they would be interested in having their kids in the video too, but they said they weren't interested. 
so I left my phone number with the parents and told them to call me if they changed their mind. Two months after that, unbeknownst to me, another busybody who heard about my video project reported my proposal to the local police. She also added the false claim that the parents were afraid of me without explaining why the parents themselves didn't report me to the police at that time or two months before or ever. Neither the police nor the prosecutor saw any need to pursue this hysterical report either. In 2015, I finally found another pair of kids to complete the video, and after editing, I published the video for kids under the title Buddy Massage, which features two pairs of kids massaging each other. The audio narration explains the technique, as well as the need for good hygiene, parental consent, and parental monitoring. An introduction to the video is on YouTube as well as Vimeo. But in order to see the full video, you must first read Real Child Safety, now in its second edition, and then answer a questionnaire to prove you read it and don't have purient interests. There is not only a complete absence of any erotic content in the video, there is a clear effort on my part to deny access to the full video to anyone whose interest is sexual. By the way, in the video, the two kids being massaged aren't wearing any clothes, but the genital area and buttocks are always covered by a towel and hence invisible to the photographer or the viewer. While I was filming the video of the first two kids, there was a brief moment when the five-year-old turns over so his gentle area and buttocks were visible momentarily. But naturally, during the editing of the original clips in post-production, I cut and deleted that irrelevant scene so it doesn't appear in the final version available to readers of Real Child Safety. My announcement of the video online was met with virtually no interest from the public. In late 2015, the original prosecutor was promoted, so the open investigation of me was reassigned to a new and inexperienced prosecutor. The two hysterical reports, not by any children or parents, but from two individuals who weren't the victims of anything except their own hysteria, the new prosecutor called numerous complaints that necessitated an illegal search of my home and my computer. A technician then found the original deleted clips, as well as a few still images of one of the same girls in a bathtub with a shower hose in one hand and a liquid soap dispenser in the other, which the new prosecutor claims are sexually motivated, as if being nude is inappropriate attire for taking a shower and as if a bathtub is a sexual context. Who has sex in a bathtub? This handful of images is private. They have never been exhibited to anyone. Nonetheless, the new prosecutor claimed there was suddenly an urgent need to arrest me. In a clear expression of distorted logic, the new prosecutor claimed that the very practice of child massage is necessarily sexual. The ears and neck are erogenous zones, she claims, and hence should be off limits to physical contact, just like the genital organs. But in reality, medical research shows that full body massage offers significant health benefits, especially in reducing the stress hormone cortisol. And several books and videos specifically advise including the ears and neck in child massage. Even more bizarre is the new prosecutor's claim that my video is an attempt to confirm my sexual theories. What sexual theories could a video about peer massage possibly confirm? In my blog, I've written about the possible cause of clitoral erectile dysfunction in some women, which entails the undisputed fact that children are capable of genital erections. So how could a video about buddy massage that includes no genital nudity whatsoever, let alone any contact with the genital area, 
possibly confirm any theory about genital erection in children or erectile dysfunction in adult women? The answer is that my video can't confirm any sexual theory and the video offers no hint whatsoever of any superficial attempt to confirm any sexual theory. But the prosecutor is so desperate to censor my free speech that she needs to convince people I'm not just a rebel, I'm a criminal and a monster. A preliminary judge rejected the request for an arrest, but the new prosecutor appealed to a higher court since there is no protection against double jeopardy here. Incredibly, the higher courts ignored the lack of evidence for the prosecutor's ridiculous accusations, so I was placed under house arrest and a gag order for over a hundred days before another judge revoked the arrest. Some of the most important university libraries contain photographs of nude children by Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland. When the photographer Gary Gross photographed the child actress Brooke Shields nude in a bathtub, the images were exhibited in the main window of a gallery on New York's Madison Avenue. Many other portraits of children completely nude have been published in books by respected publishers, such as the Aperture Foundation and in the series of books that includes The Family of Woman. Even here in Italy, some famous photographers have not only made but published images of children completely nude, such as Stefano Azario, a fashion photographer for the international magazine Vogue Bambini, and Letizia Battaglia, some of whose photographs of nude children were recently published right here in Palermo's major daily newspaper. Although the accusation against me is outrageous, I suspect that my case is not at all unusual. When the mainstream media occasionally report that hundreds of people have been arrested, arrested for possession of so-called child porn, the readers or viewers of the so-called news merely take it for granted that what is accused of being child porn must be sexual images or videos even though there may actually be no real sexual content at all. Conveniently, due to the graphic nature of the subject, the public is never shown the supposed evidence. My trial begins in October, but the scandalous accusations against me have already destroyed an innocent teacher's reputation, regardless of whether the courts eventually find me guilty or innocent.